Hi, my friends. This is a request. Uh, I think this will be a pretty quick video, but I had a request to go through sort of my view of the numerology of the tarot of the minors in particular. So that's what I'm going to do. So I prepared this little slideshow around that for you. Now, it's important to know that um, in my book, Tarot on Earth, which is still available on many <laughs> uh, online sites, um, what I recommend doing and what I did was finding multiple sources and exploring numerology and, and coming up with a list of keywords and phrases and concepts for each number based on research that you would do on your own. And so what I have here for you is really like a summary of, of my version of, of having done that. But just for, you know, just for request or if you don't want to kind of go through the whole process of, of doing what I do in the book, then this is, you know, it's, it's really high level. But the purpose, again, is, is to give you a sense of it and not to be a definitive guide. You'll find many, 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 many different associations for the numbers. And what I think is important is not that you choose the quote right one, but that you choose one system and that you're fairly consistent with it. All right, so that's my that's my biggest piece of advice is whatever system you land on, whatever keywords or uh, phrases you assign to the the cards, it's important primarily that you're fairly consistent. So, um, so we're gonna go through one through ten, and I'll just sort of talk about each number and and my impression of it, and um, um, yeah, that'll that'll be that. And again, by my standards, probably a fairly quick video. All right, so we start with aces, and aces are really the simplest. Now, when we look at one, two, and three, we're going to see that there's a real strong relationship between them. They they build on each other, and in a similar way, so to four and five and um, six. Uh, you know, So those first six in particular are really interesting. One, two, and three are, in essence, sort of the purest in in their in their way because they're kind of unadorned by anything else so one is is very very simply a seed it's the beginning of something it's the idea of something it's it's the urge or the yen of something now what you do is you would filter that in terms of each of the suits as we go through so tarot numerology isn't just about the numbers it's also about the meanings that you assign the suits and so uh, another thing to think about is what are what does air mean, what does fire mean, etc. Fire, for example, if we think about fire in terms of passion, and if we think about the ace as an urge, then there's an initial attraction there, which is different than if we're thinking about air as um, the need to communicate. We have the an idea that needs to be communicated, um, but again, it's it's a seed, so it's not fully developed. Same thing with the with the passion. If you look at fire again, it's not it's not fully developed passion. It's like that initial like, oh, hey there, you know, the sort of moment before the discovery of attraction. So it's important, I think, when we think of the seed to think of it or the ace as a seed that it's not even a pollinated seed. It's not a seed that's sprouting. It's literally the potential for energy. It's the potential for development. It's the potential for growth, emotion, intellect, or duty, for example, if we think about each of the, each of the suits. So one is very, very simple by my standards. Now, how do you know like whether we're talking about urge or seed or whatever? It's, it has a lot to do, like I always say, with context. Um, so if the question happens to be about a relationship, no matter what suit comes up, I know that there's the element of urge there. Now, if it's pentacles or coins, and we're talking about earth, the urge is different than it is when it's fire. Like with fire, the urge is probably sex or sexuality or procreation. With pentacles, it's probably that's probably not the starting point. The starting point with pentacles is going to be responsibility. So while you, it's easy to compare fire as sex and pentacles with responsibility, but with fire, you want to get it on. And with with air, I'm sorry, with earth, you want to start a family. And the intention is really different, right? And so the subtlety comes out of the context of the question and the subtle aspects of the suit. And I think that that's really important to remember. 
Now, two is where something gets added to the equation. So we go from a seed to something else. So there's something else acting in consort with the one. You know, so we originally had this point, and then now we have another point, and the relationship begins to exist. And because the relationship exists, there is action happening. And I think about two as a magnet. If you think about a bar magnet, right, the polar opposite sides are drawn to each other. They're attracted to each other. But when they're flipped, when you try to force south with south and north with north, they repel each other. So with two, the idea for me is really this idea of polarity or divided into attraction and repulsion. Things are drawn to each other or things are pushed away from each other. Um, and when they're drawn to each other, when there's an attraction, there's a consequence to that, which is the three, and we'll talk about that. If the repulsion happens, then there's a different consequence, which is that we don't move to three. You know what I mean? So if you think about people um, who want to start a family and they're not attracted to each other, for example, it's, it's going to be very difficult to produce a child, right? Um, or on the other hand, if they're insanely attracted to each other, it's going to be a lot easier for them to at least attempt the acts that, that, re that, require, you know, that are required to create a child. So two has a lot to do with polarity, attraction and repulsion. There's also this idea of duality, which is that nothing is one thing. Uh, you know, if you think about a coin or even these magnets, there are two sides to them. And so the two also access, uh, asks us to consider more than one possibility, which is where I think if you think about the Waite Smith picture of the two of swords and the two of pentacles, choice frequently becomes uh, ingrained in those two. And I think that that makes sense because duality is is it compl too complicates things so in one we just had the seed the urge the beginning the idea the 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 point with two there's something else and now there's a fork there's a decision to be made and so that's what duality suggests to me um and life is full of gen uh binaries uh or at least we like to think of them in terms of binaries so there's like gender binaries of male and female which we now know are, are far more complicated than that but duality is a very human thing um and so the two embodies that so it so it embodies pol polarity and duality and again how do i know it depends on the context and this is one reason why I don't use one cards generally or do one card readings is because when I have multiple numbers at play, when I have multiple cards at play, it helps me refine the context. So the combination is always the number plus the suit. So the two of wands, again, if we think about passion, that really is going to have a lot to do with physical attraction, for example, um, whereas the two of swords may have much more to do with intellectual attraction with finding someone who's like-minded the two of cups may be more about finding someone who is um, equally receptive for example so again we always filter the number through the suit and the suit through the number and both of those through the question now three is the consequence or the result of one and two so one and two come together and they create three and so this is where the seed turns into a sprout or this is where the mother and the father produce the child. So threes are about growth, birth, result, consequence. This is the first produce, the first product of one and two. And that's why three represents growth. Now what I don't have on here is also the idea of triangulation, which takes duality and complicates it even more. So now, you're, you've got choice one and choice two, but you're viewing it through your own perspective. Or you've got his side of the story, her side of the story, and then the truth. That's triangulation. So that, I didn't really explore that here, but that's part of it as well. But three is really the direct result of one and two coming together. So that's where birth, result, consequence, and growth comes from. As I said at the beginning, you know, this is different from system to system and, and depending on where your numerology sources are coming from this is going to vary but three three has a lot to do in my experience with this idea now excuse me now with four things change a little bit four stabilizes so four is our foundation 
four is very uh, it's a square so it's 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 every inch of foundation it's every inch um something to sit on it's a cube um, and if you think about the emperor and the majors, you get a similar sense of the solidity. And so fours represent foundation and stability. But now we're going to start filtering in light and shadow. Now, all of these have light and shadow in them, right? Um, and two is a good example of that because duality and polarity have both. But three, you know, when we talked about three, like consequences aren't necessarily a good thing. So it's important to think about that. Growth may not necessarily be easy. And so the there's light and shadow to each, but I start filtering it in here because you have foundation and stability, but then you also have stasis and conservatism. And that's really important as we move into five, which I'll talk about in a second. So the other thing to remember with all of these numbers is that they're not they're not good or bad. Five and nine, in my experience, tend to be the more negative numbers in a sort of traditional, uh, you know, basic sense. But they have good to them, too, and we'll explore that. But so, 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 too, do the more, quote, positive numbers. There's both in everything. And that's duality. You know, so every number has light and shadow in them, and that's duality. And then every number has neutral in them, and that's triangulation. So you kind of see how these, these things come to life. So four is your foundation, it's your stability, but when we're too stable, when we're too foundational, we can become conservative, we can become stuck, we can become stasis, we can get in a rut. Now five comes along and it blasts that up. So five as an odd number breaks up the square of the four. And five is disruption, it's interruption, it's change, it's all of the things that four isn't. And so five comes along and smashes four. And there are times where that's good, and there are times when it's not. So if four is representing stability in our foundation, five can be really destructive. But if it's interrupting our conservatism and our stasis, it can be really productive. And so I avoided the word destruction here because it's disruptive, but it's not necessarily destructive. It depends, again, on the context. So the numbers influence its light or shadow has a whole lot to do with what's going on and so if the question is i'm really bored at work what do i need and i get the five of swords well i need to shake up my thinking i need to disrupt the way i've been thinking about everything see what see what i mean and that would be a good thing whereas i'm feeling really comfortable in my relationship right now what's next boom big change you know big disruption to that Six comes back and, and rebalances after the five. So we had stability, it was disrupted, and now six comes along and we pick up the pieces and we rebalance our lives. Um, so six is very much a rebalanced card, um, or number rather, and it's also twice three. So it can also suggest the... Um, a doubling down on growth. So after you go through the five, you get six, which is two, three, two times three. And then so the growth becomes even more accelerated. But I tend to view it more as balance. There's a big um, connection to six and beauty. And so I've always included that in this too. And it's often sort of my first word that I reach for even more than rebalance. But what I like to think about when I think about beauty is, again, there's light and shadow to that. So when six represents something in shadow, what you get is vanity. Likewise, rebalance. You know what I mean? There are times where rebalancing is good, but there are times where we draw balance in situations where it's either not appropriate or not necessary. And so in that case, um, what I've written here is false equivalence you know, um, a false sense of balance, trying to balance out what doesn't want to be balanced, trying to force balance on situations where balance isn't necessary or where both sides aren't equal. Those are That's where false equivalence falls into play. You see this a lot in poli political discussions these days because, for example, the news media will say, we're fair and balanced. We want to present both sides of the story. But uh, politicos will tell you there's both sides of the story aren't good. They're not right. You know what I mean? And so there's an interesting relationship that we have to the idea of six in modern life because there's a requirement in quotation marks, for example, that uh, news media be balanced 
But then the question is, is balanced actually right? Or is it giving unfair advantage to a really dangerous idea? Now, I don't have the answers to those questions in this video, but it's a good it's a good idea of what false equivalents can suggest and how rebalance can exist in a negative form. Now, seven and nine are, are, for me, very different from a lot of things, but they did come from my research. So seven, after you, after you have the double growth or the rebalancing of six, you have to sort of check in with yourself. And here you get into introspection. So with the seven, we kind of go inside and look at ourselves. We look at what we're thinking, look at what we're feeling. We look at ourselves in an emotional mirror and we get introspective. So we reflect, we evaluate you know, life has changed from the seed through six. Where am I now? Are the things that I thought had value still valuable? Um, do I still think the things I thought? Do I still feel the things I feel? So that's what seven is. But then the other side of that coin, because again, everything has light and shadow in it, is self-obsession. So we become obsessed with ourselves, with our, with our, with staying inside, with going inner, or we become really self-conscious. And so seven, again, is the result of six, because with six, we've grown, we've changed, we've gone through something. Seven asks us to reevaluate, but it can sometimes leave us stuck there, and we can't move on. And if we do fall into that place of self-obsession um, or self-consciousness, then work needs to be done. And that's where the eight comes into play. So eight is absolutely about work. Um, it's absolutely about effort. It's about labor. It's about concentration. And if you notice here, um, I've recreated, uh, you know, the Eight of Pentacles from the Waitsmith because I think that it's it's a really good embodiment of the number, not just for the Pentacles, but for all the four elements because that's what Eight does. Um, so it is, it's doing the work. So in seven, if we are introspective for too long, then we run the risk of becoming self, self-obsessed. self Eight takes us to the place where we need to go to work and get things done. So with six, we grew, we rebalanced, we found beauty again after the five. In seven, we said, what do I still know? What do I know, feel? What, what's changed? And eight, then we put that to work. Um, if you think about the math, then eight is two fours. So it's four, um, two times four. So if you think back to four as stability and foundation, eight doubles that. And so you've got a restabilization or double the security or the work that goes into making something secure, if that makes sense. So that's what eight is. It's all about effort. And again, we're filtering it through the lens of the suits. So it's emotional effort for cups. It's physical effort for wands. It's responsibility, the effort of responsibility for coins. It's mental effort for swords. Uh, and again, I'm oversimplifying a little bit, but you get the point. Now with nine, we're almost there. But we have this like Sisyphusian, is that a word? Thing that's happening, which is like we're almost there, but we're not there yet. And so nine... We've been working and working on eight and nine. We feel like, oh, my God, it should be done. But we're not done yet. And so nine is the push to the finish line. It's the final effort. But it's also wanting to give up. It's anxiety and security. I'll never make it there. So nine is a really complex and generally kind of negative uh, tone to it. But remember, there's light and shadow to each. Now, Sisyphus can't get the rock up the hill. That's that's the myth. We do. But not always. And sometimes the rock rolls back down and we have to start again. And in nine, there's the cycle of, of taking effort and having to exert it and trust that we're going to get there. And we don't always know that we will. Um, and so if you think about the nine of swords in Waitsmith, you've got this really anxious experience. Um, that card has always represented anxiety for me. And I think that that's a really good depiction of what the nine can mean if you're thinking about it in terms of of getting through we don't think we can get through we don't think we can get through the night in that card well that happens to us in life and that's what nines frequently represent but then we do and at 10 we reach the finish line we complete we get to the finale we get to the finish we get to the end and the cycle may start again in fact it will start again so 
the 10 takes us right back to the seed. It takes us right back to the beginning in a way because we have a few minutes to celebrate, but then we're going to have to go all the way back to the start and a new cycle is going to start, a new beginning is going to start. Um, but the 10 does mean that the cycle is over. Um, we can throw our hands up, grab some water, but then very quickly we're going to have to get back in the um, get back in the trenches again. So that's a really simple view of the number cards. Um, and again, I always think about this in terms of number plus suit equals meaning for a base level thing. Number plus suit plus question is even more important. So I have plenty of videos on context, but just to give you a sense of the numbers and how I've come to settle on my really base level meanings, this is kind of where I live. Uh, so I hope this was helpful. Um, please let me know and let me know if you have any questions. Again, represent th this again, this represents my work, my experience, my research. It's not a universal thing, but if this um, if this means anything to you, then I would definitely take it. And if you're interested in how I did it, then I would recommend my book. <laughs> um, so there's a link below to that too. All right, friends, be good, and we'll talk soon.